there is always something about an unknown photograph that's so mysterious and almost haunting. Tons of questions always surface to the mind, like who was in the photo, when was it taken, what were they doing, and what were they thinking. Photos like stories themselves offering a mystery to solve. Hundreds of millions of them from across history are left without descriptions, forever lost to the past, hidden in the shelves of dusty antique shops. Even though many of these stories have been lost to time, it does not mean that they still can't be found. As the popular saying goes, a picture is worth a thousand words. So today, here at Unexplained Mysteries, we'll be taking a look at three rare historical photos and finally reveal the hidden stories and tales behind them. Two Armenian Women Posing The caption of this photo describes what it is on the surface. Two Armenian women pose with their rifles before going to battle against the Ottomans, 1895. Yet under the surface behind their unsmiling expressions, many questions remain. Although this photo is shrouded in mystery, some is known about how these women with rifles came to be. The story takes place in 1895, during a time of great bloodshed and chaos in the Ottoman Empire. It was during the Hamidian massacres where thousands of Armenians were attacked and passed away, which might explain the rifles. However, on the back of the photo, there's a note that says, Souvenir, so no one ever really knew whether the women were actual fighters or just dressing up to pretend. The woman on the left, at least, has been identified. However, her friend on the right was never identified. Yet what is known is that both fortunately survived the massacres and found their lives in the United States. The trail of the women then leads to a halt. The rifles also are a source of mystery leading to a cold stop. They don't look alike to any mass-produced rifle of that day, with many speculating it may be fake due to the chamber area, bolt and cocking piece, and rear sight bases are all not what a normal rifle would look like. The same goes for the revolver sling, the proportions do not match a regular revolver, like around the trigger guard area. Perhaps all these weapons were fake and were made to be props in a photo booth rather than actual deadly machines. But does that mean the women weren't possible fighters? Not necessarily. Maybe those weapons were handmade instead of mass-produced, or more likely they would use fakes just for the photo and use actual weapons out on the battlefield. That's because it was not unusual for Armenian women to defend their communities by stepping up to the plate. During the Hamidian massacres and the Armenian genocide, the Ottoman Empire authorities took the men away, which usually meant they would not return home, due to most of them losing their lives. Therefore, as a result, the women and their children were left to defend themselves back home. These civilian defenders who chose to leave their families to come together and form self-defense units to protect themselves from the pillage and slaughter of their surroundings were called for Dei. It was these people numbering in the thousands that led the Armenian nation into independence in 1918 after numerous rebellions and resistances in the national movement. The massacres that devastated the Armenian people had taken more than 80,000 to 300,000 people. Their blood was on the hands of the Ottoman Sultan Abdul Hamid II, who was later internationally condemned by foreign governments and humanitarian organizations when news of the horrors spread. At the end, over 50,000 children were orphaned. Although the story of these specific women holding rifles may be lost to time forever, they will always remind us of the Armenian people and the plight they faced long ago. Hannah Stilly Gorby, born in 1746, was the earliest born person ever documented on a photo. Throughout history, we have read so many stories about fascinating people and events by text. However, it was rare that a photograph was ever shown in class. How did people look back then, and what did they wear? It was so difficult to ever put a face to a piece of writing detailing all the crazy events that went down from the greatest wars to the worst of plagues and political turmoil. That was until one black and white photo surfaced from the many, showing an older woman with an unsmiling expression. Her eyes stared strikingly into the camera 
while the rest of her body and hair were completely covered in a dress. Her name was finally put to her face. Hannah Stilly Gorby was apparently the earliest born person to have ever been photographed. That means she would have been living at the apex of some of history's most notable events and figures. She was born in 1746, the year Bonnie Prince Charlie's dreams were ruined and the Battle of Culloden. At 10 years old, she was living when Mozart was just born. During her life, she was caught up in the American Revolution and was an adult when King Louis and Mary Antoinette's heads were chopped by the guillotine during the French revolutions. Around that time, the brilliant mathematician Euler was up and coming, the age of sail had ended, and the age of steam began, and she possibly could have ridden one of the earliest versions of the bicycle. But the cherry on the top was the honour of having been the earliest born woman ever photographed. However, with old vintage artefacts, both rare and special, there's a lot that's unsure and questionable about so-called facts. It is known that this daguerreotype photo was captured in 1840, and that she married a man named Joseph Gorby in 1770, in Wilmington, Delaware, in the Holy Trinity Old Swedes Church. What is not known, though, is whether Hannah's birth and death years are truly real. They were never documented directly, so it's unverifiable if her photograph really is the earliest. For instance, there's no trace of her in the federal census or her passing date, and there was never any record found of her burial. The evidence is too few, and credibility may be stretched too far for people to be certain of her status. It's more likely that Massachusetts shoemaker John Adams was the earliest person photographed. Even though nothing is certain about Hannah Stilly Gorby and her mysterious photo, the fascination around the era she was born, as well as what she was possibly thinking in the moment her existence was captured, will forever leave audiences in awe. An aerial view of the flowers left outside Buckingham Palace after the passing of Princess Diana. In 1997, a piece of news left Great Britain in shock and overwhelming mourning. Princess Diana had passed away in a fatal car crash in the middle of the night. As a beloved member of the British royal family, she was the first wife of Prince Charles, who was the heir apparent to the British throne, and the mother of Prince William and Prince Harry. During the car crash, she was not pronounced deceased at the scene. Instead, she was rushed to the hospital, where doctors operated on her for two hours and failed to get her heart beating regularly again. She later passed away from internal bleeding. The very first mourners went to Kensington Palace almost as soon as they heard of the tragedy before the break of dawn. Soon, news of the fatal accident swept Great Britain. People wept with sadness and raw emotion, deciding to pay tribute. Many began to wait in line for more than 12 hours to sign books of condolence. The greatest display of mourning was perhaps the flowers. According to officials, 10 to 15 tons of bouquets and over 60 million flowers were left for Diana's memory and honour all around London. Between the many bouquets were flags, photographs, stuffed animals, candles and even personal notes. It was the only way for people to feel like their mourning left a mark and represented their love for the princess. The display of flowers stayed for over a week and grew as time went on. There were so many that on the day of Princess Diana's funeral, the hearse used its wipers to wipe off the flowers and stems that were thrown as it carried Diana to her final resting place. At one point, they even had to pull over. In the end, volunteers started cleaning up the blooms that were decaying. Much of it was used for compost in the Kensington Palace Gardens, while other fresh flowers were delivered to the hospitals and nursing homes. Children in need were able to receive the toys left in tribute as donations. But what do you make of these fascinating historical photographs? Be sure to let us know your thoughts in the comment section below and help us by growing this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.